no tax on books by united states senator charles sumner 1864 this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org remarks in the senate the senator from new york mr morgan has proposed the exemption of a class of hospitals i am in favor of his proposition it is not now however under discussion in similar spirit i move to strike out on the one hundred and thirty fifth page lines two hundred and twelve two hundred and thirteen and two hundred and fourteen as follows on all printed books magazines pamphlets reviews and all other similar printed publications except newspapers a duty of five per cent ad valorem i make one remark on this tax we do not tax wheat or corn because they are the staff of life in my judgment a tax on books is less defensible than a tax on wheat or on corn i believe books are the staff of life and i believe that our country would do itself honour if at this moment when imposing a heavy tax upon all things it deliberately exempted books the tax proposed is applicable to all books books for family reading for the library and also for the school all that we can get from the tax will be very small indeed it will not add sensibly to the treasury but it will impose a burden upon knowledge i hope therefore that the senate will strike the words out the motion was rejected at the next stage of the bill mr sumner renewed his motion to strike out the tax on books and then said mr president i am sorry to occupy the attention of the senate even for a moment especially at this late stage of a protracted debate but i feel that the question which i have presented is not adequately appreciated i venture to say that in point of principle few questions of equal importance have arisen on this bill the tax on books is peculiar and so far as i know without precedent in other countries in england paper has been taxed but books not here paper is to be taxed and books also for instance there is to be a tax of three per cent on paper and then five per cent additional on books making a sum total of eight per cent on books the tax of three per cent on paper seems contrary to sound policy but the additional tax of five per cent on books is more indefensible still i have already likened it to a tax on wheat or flour or bread which you do not think of imposing more than either of these is a book the staff of life it may be likened also to a tax on the light of day like the english window tax which you do not think of imposing better shut out the light of day than the light of books the book in some cases may be a luxury but in most cases it is a necessary while always the handmaid of civilization it is for all ages and all conditions for young and old for rich and poor for the family circle as well as the library but it is especially for the school in all these places you will enter and demand eight per cent on every book every book if it had a voice would repel the demand why not be instructed by the example of england when taxing everything taxable read the extensive list of articles taxed at the period of most searching and widespread taxation and you do not find books read that marvellous enumeration made by the genius of sidney smith and you do not find books Quote, taxes upon every article which enters into the mouth or covers the back or is placed under the foot taxes upon everything which it is pleasant to see hear feel smell or taste taxes upon warmth light and locomotion taxes on everything on earth and the waters under the earth on everything that comes from abroad or is grown at home taxes on the raw material taxes on every fresh value that is added to it by the industry of man taxes on the sauce which pampers man's appetite and the drug that restores him to health on the ermine which decorates the judge and the rope which hangs the criminal on the poor man's salt and the rich man's spice 
on the brass nails of the coffin and the ribbons of the bride at bed or board couchant or levant we must pay the schoolboy whips his taxed top the beardless youth manages his taxed horse with a taxed bridle on a taxed road and the dying englishman pouring his medicine which has paid seven per cent into a spoon that has paid fifteen per cent flings himself back upon his chintz bed which has paid twenty two per cent and expires in the arms of an apothecary who has paid a license of a hundred pounds for the privilege of putting him to death his whole property is then immediately taxed from two to ten per cent besides the probate large fees are demanded for burying him in the chancel his virtues are handed down to posterity on taxed marble and he is then gathered to his fathers to be taxed no more End quote. a passage so exquisite in wit and language is seasonable here especially when considering what shall be taxed but i ask you to bear in mind that the english tax-gatherer never laid his hand on a book everything else he might touch a book never and yet in our country it is proposed to tax books this is the land of public schools where you boast that education like justice is free to all at the common cost but a tax on books is in direct conflict with this beautiful principle every argument for free schools pleads also for free books at least for freedom from taxation it will be a curious inconsistency to rear the schoolhouse often costly where every child is welcomed without charge and then compel him to pay a tax of eight per cent on every book he carries in his satchel there is one term which fitly characterizes this tax it is a term adopted abroad but more justly applicable to a tax on books than to any other tax i mean a tax on knowledge such is the tax now proposed and this tax which cannot be named without awakening just condemnation you are asked to make an american institution after long struggle in england the various taxes on knowledge are abandoned i hope that our country representative and defender of liberal ideas will not commence a system which modern civilization has disowned i ask for the yeas and nays the motion was lost yeas eight nays nineteen end of no tax on books by charles sumner read by david wales